Hi. Hi. I have no voice. Just like, no voice. Just like, <laughs> I kind of know what he's going to say. I'll, I'll tell you. She can answer for me. Well, you guys didn't uh, have a very happy ending. At, <laughs> <laughs> at least you're not dead. You look happier than mine. Well, we don't know if you're dead because your eyes were pecked out so we can't see if maybe you were blinking. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I was blinking. I, well, I look pretty beaten up. You looked awful. This is the worst I've ever seen you look. It's really upsetting. <laughs> How is Tatuba going to get back into the Salem society because now she's been outcast? She hasn't. She's been outcast by the devil. I'm thinking he's more outcast by the Puritans than I am at this point. Um, who knows what's going to happen with that little nightmare? <laughs> Horrible child. Um, I don't know what she would do. I'm quite happy for her to like live in the woods and become the new Petrus. But maybe like, I'm saying that now. Maybe I'm going to hate that four episodes in when it's just me in that hut, <laughs> acting opposite myself. Who knows? Maybe you and Mercy can help. Out. Yeah. I don't really like her though. Titch no, Titch you're, you're desperate yeah. to and Janet and I pitched that perhaps because she's dead in the woods and I'm dead in the woods, perhaps we could come across each other and because needs must combine our powers to do something. Get me some animal eyes. <laughs> We got a glimpse of the coven kind of wanting to stay out of the fray. Yeah. Is that going to change in the next season? Well, I interestingly enough, we this is a this is what we shot. We actually shot them being killed. But we didn't show them being killed. So I don't, I don't know. I I thought they were dead. And I someone had to tell me they were killed because I never I never watched myself. So I don't know. What's your own um, personal history with horror and supernatural genre? Are you both fans, generally speaking? I am. I love the zombie genre. I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. Uh, I love Night of the Living Dead, which is not really zombie, but yeah, I love zombies. My favourite zombie film is 28 Days Later, because I think they upped it. When they start running, I cannot. <laughs> um, ever since I had kids, I can't. Re it's hard for me to watch horror. Right. Just something totally changed for me, and I was just like, for the I fear think, of them hearing it, or no, it's like when you have kids, it's described as like your heart being outside your body, and like I think when you first watch horror, it's kind of about overcoming the fears that you feel for yourself, but you have control over you know who you are in the face of that adversity. But when you have children, and you see these awful things, you're just like, no, no, no just like put sick stuff in your mind so I'm appalled by the work I'm doing no. <laughs> um, I, I think our show you know is kind of different and I think it's more in the supernatural fantasy realm I kind of see our show as like an American Game of Thrones you know there's a little there's a little horror but not but fantasy has that I yeah. mean every genre has that um, what I do love about the horror on our show is that it's that it's practical effects instead of CGI um, because I think there is a real art to that and Matthew Mungle who um, brilliantly works on our show like, I mean it's like kind of watching a Jim Henson piece or something you know like that aspect of horror I do appreciate in terms of like making creatures and magical things seem real how long do you guys have to like spend makeup and trailer? It depends. It depends. I I'm like five hours just to get like this. Just to get no. She's just like a couple minutes. I had a cast of my head made uh, back in Los Angeles so that they could make a double so that so someone other than me could have their eyes plucked out. Um, and I went into it thinking I'd be fine, but I, I started freaking out. They had to do it in stages because it's really claustrophobic. You lose all of your senses, and I, I found it really scary. And you wonder if people are like pointing at you. Just saying mean <laughs> shit about me behind my back. Um, I'm glad that I've done it now. I don't think I'll ever have to do it again. I think you don't have to do them until you're older. Now they have one on file. It's a good uh -huh. fingerprint. Yeah. yeah, I did one for Fringe. I have to like get a hold of that so I don't need to do it again. You should, you should. But I feel like my face changed. <laughs> Hello. It was a pretty heartbreaking moment when Cotton found out that you know what Hale had done, and then disclosed that he had actually loved her and had been the whole time. Yeah. How is he going to deal with that now that he's made three men for the first lady? Well, I mean that part sucks. <laughs> um, I think Cotton is though a receptive man, and I think 
you know, evolved for his time period. Uh, I mean, one of my favorite lines from last season is, uh, I talk about how we should run away together, and she says she doesn't want to, and I say, but didn't you hear what I said? I love you. No, yeah. Which is just... It just shows the ignorance of men in that time period. It's like, isn't that, doesn't that, isn't that all a woman really wants is a man to love her? And I'm doing that. You're not satisfied. Um, I feel like because of that statement, he's now suffering under her spell and under her control. Uh, what I would love to see is kind of what's going on inside his mind um, and have that be manifested in some kind of reality that we can view and see. Uh, and I imagine that karmically he'll discover some bit of wisdom or knowledge where he kind of understands where Anne is coming from. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.